Ladies and gentlemen, we could be on the verge of a collapse for the large pickup truck market here in the United States. It's not looking good, but somehow Toyota with their Tundra is having best all time months for the hybrid version. Its sales are up, it's crushing it. The Nissan Titan, we'll talk about that as well. Yes, they still make it. So what's causing this collapse of the large pickup truck market? Today, we're gonna to get into this. If you're new to the channel, my name is Kirk. I'm actually in San Diego right now to drive a Toyota pickup truck. Um, the Tacoma Hybrid, the Trail Hunter, the TRD Pro, the Limited, those come with the new iForce Max 2.4 Turbo. I'll be driving that off road today. Stay tuned for those driving impressions in the coming days, weeks. So what we have here is the pickups being left out of the Q1 sales growth. The market grew 5.6%. And that even includes the fall of large pickup trucks of 4% in the first quarter. Check this out. The U.S. auto industry posted back-to-back -back first quarter sales gains for the first time since the Obama administration. Guys, we're going way back. And pickup trucks literally print money for the big three, Ford, Chevy, and Dodge. And if they're no longer printing the money, their companies could be in massive trouble for the rest of 2024 and beyond. The Ram 1500 fell 15% 15 in the first quarter. The F-Series dropped 10%. General Motors is hanging on there. They've down uh, about 1.2%. Though higher sales of heavy-duty models resulted in overall gains for both Chevy and Silverado. Make sure to watch out my Sierra 2500 HD review that came out of left field, and that truck was incredible. It was like driving a massive bus, but yeah, long-lived diesel, right? GM and Nissan were the only automakers to sell more pickups than in the first quarter of 2023. Yes, Toyota did not sell more pickup trucks. So is my title misleading? Well, the Tacoma's down. So let's take a brief look at what's going on with Toyota. So we just talked about General Motors being down 1%. Ford being down 10%, Ram down 15%. We're going to the Toyota press room here. The Tundra, though, is killing it. Best all-time month for the hybrid versions of the Tundra. Best all-time quarter for the Tundra hybrid as well. And sales up 43% in March for all Tundra sales and 31% in the first quarter. So let's go look at what's going on with Toyota, who is completely avoiding what the big three are doing right now. The big three are all down in the first quarter. All right, Chevy being close to being neutral. Um, Tacoma is down 55%. Now, they're switching over production and there are two Mexico plants, Guanajuato, I believe, as well as Baja. And they just have not got the hybrid uh, production up and running yet to full capacity, as well as the non-hybrid. Okay, so I think there's some growing pains going on south of the border with the Tacoma. But the Tundra, guys, look at this. It was up 43% on the month of March and up 31% so far this year. Now, could we see the Tundra decline in the remaining quarters of 2024? Of course. Maybe Toyota is a little bit delayed with their brand desirability compared to the big three. It's hard to say. But if we look at uh, Sequoia Hybrid that also shares that platform, up 25% on uh, the month and up 36% on the year. And here's Tundra. The Tundra Hybrid was up 109% on the month of March and up 72% on the year so far. The, the demand is still very, very high for that pickup truck. And it is super high for the Tacoma, right? But the production is just not there on the Tacoma. Over at IC Cars, Denver, Colorado, the best car to buy new right now is actually the Toyota Tundra. It only loses about 7% of its market value on the used market, okay? Now, Tacoma's in there, I think, for certain areas as well right here, right? For uh, North Carolina, for example, Camry. Like, there's a lot of Toyotas here that are better to dry or better to buy new than it is to buy used based, of, based off of their de lack of depreciation, essentially. And remember, GM and Nissan are the only two automakers to sell more pickups in the first quarter uh, of 2024 compared to 2023. So let's pop on over to the Nissan and the Titan here is up 2.6%.
Long live the Titan is getting discontinued, I think, by the by this summer. And it is doing extremely well compared to the big three anyways. Maybe not, you know, that 40% gain that we saw with the Tundra, but it's hanging in there. And the good old Frontier up 16% on the year as well. Okay, so why are people fading from the large pickup truck market? Well, it's something we're seeing in the EV market. It's something we're seeing also in the luxury market. Not all luxury brands like Lexus is crushing it. Genesis is doing really well. Accuracy and drops, Infinity seeing drops. I think Cadillac may have seen some drops well as well this past quarter. Um, so the luxury brand is falling, the big truck market's falling, and the EV market's falling the fastest. And why? Because payment conscious customers may be pulling back from discretionary purchases of big pickup trucks as prices and interest rates climb. And that helped the Ford Maverick surge 82% so far this quarter. And so subcompact and crossovers rose 25%. And check out the big pickup share graph here over at Automotive News. Look at this. It peaked in 2020, right? We were seeing 0% financing up to like 84 months on these really high end expensive pickup trucks. 0%. And look at the erosion of the new truck market. Okay. It's been very subtle, right? Just dropping one or 0.1 percentage point, 30.9, 30.8, 13.7. And then here in 2024, the quarter, guys, these are all first quarter sales, okay? So like this was pretty steady here and then it just fell off of a cliff. You know, I hate to be like a, a bearer of bad news, but like what, where is this gonna go? And that's what makes it exciting for me. I get to talk about this because the market right now, it's going on in the housing market. It's going on in, in the, the luxury, the truck market right now as well, the EV market. Charlie Chesbro, senior economist over at Cox Automotive, has said pickups have run into two hurdles, interest rates and high prices. Sounds like the housing market to me are having a negative impact directly on affordability and the slowdown in, con in construction as well is likely impacting demand all right so less fleet sales as well less craftsmen out there buying trucks if you want to look at it that way we don't feel there is much pinup demand remaining in fleet sales additional growth in the full-size pickup segment will be challenging over the near term buyers appear to want functionality but at lower prices now unlike the housing market where there's inventory issues the truck market has still tons of trucks sitting on lots but the problem is, is during the pandemic when buyers were getting 3%, 2%, 1%, even 0% financing for like seven years, why would you go finance a brand new pickup truck at this point at like 8% or more? It makes zero sense. And so I feel like, you know, that was kind of like a panic situation from the manufacturers in 2020, right? We didn't know what was going on. We we're just kind of going with the flow, unfortunately, in a lot of ways. But those low interest rates that crept up in 2020, we're seeing that affect the new pickup truck market terribly. New pickup trucks, even though the Tundra is doing well, even though the Nissan Titan's doing well, they're just a tiny piece of the pie compared to what the big three sell in terms of volume. And full-size pickup share in the first quarter here in the United States is only 2.4%. Nothing in recent history has even been close to that. Guys, make sure you subscribe because I can't wait to see where the market goes. Before I end this though, Toyota is killing the market. Toyota valuation doubles in new CEO's first year, referring to Koji Sato. He took over for uh, now chairman Akio Toyota. Now Akio is still up there pulling the strings. Koji's more of a team leader. Akio Toyota-san, he was more of like the old school, top down. He has a vision and everyone's going to listen. And it's great to have a balance of having that sort of leadership for years. And now we're having a little bit more of a communal leadership. And there are pros and cons to both, right? But it's exciting to see what Koji Sato is doing as well. Former uh, leader of Lexus and also the lead engineer for the best Lexus still currently in the market, the LC 500 Koji Sato brought Toyota to be the first 
ever Japanese company with a market cap above 60 trillion yen or $395 billion, which is double the figure that we saw at the end of March 2023. And Toyota's market value beat the Japanese record by telecommunications group of NTT back in the bubble era of 1987. Now, Toyota is not that far behind Tesla. Market cap on Tuesday was $530 billion. And that puts them 40% ahead of Toyota. But Toyota's going up in value and Tesla keeps going down, especially with the EV market and its uncertainty. And a lot of the issues plaguing the EV market can't be remedied overnight, okay? The charging infrastructure, the cost of battery electric vehicles, the range, etc. right? There's still a lot of hurdles there. Toyota has no hurdles. Zip zilch with their multi-prong approach. What is their, what is Toyota's hurdles right now? I guess maybe some of their dealers, right? Who can mark up their cars because they're so desirable at this point in time, appealing to what customers want, which are gas models, hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and they have some EVs. They're not the best in the world, Toyota, but by 2026, that is all going to change. Toyota will have competitive EVs by 2026. In the meantime, they're licking their chops with hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and gas models. But it's not just Toyota, whose stock has risen about 93% over the past year. Honda has risen 53%, who's also licking their chops on the backs of hybrids. Stellantis is up 46%. Uh, Chinese electric leader BYD fell 12%, Tesla 19%, right? They pretty much only make EVs. BYD makes some plug-in hybrids, uh, but I don't think they export many of those plug-in hybrids. Toyota greatly outpaced Nikkei's uh, stock average growth of 42%. Toyota has about a 60% hold on the global hybrid market as well. That's only going to keep creeping up with the introduction of the all-hybrid Camry they'll be driving tomorrow, with the introduction of potentially the all-hybrid RAV4 coming out in the next couple of years. It's going to be very interesting to see what Toyota does. And uh, maybe buying stock right now wouldn't be a bad thing, but I'm definitely not. I'm the last person you should be listening to for financial advice, so don't uh, to put any stock in that. Yeah, I know that's a bad joke, but I got, I mean, the sun still isn't up. I still need to get this video up and out. And then uh, I'm going to be doing some forerunner stuff today before the reveal, but I can't share it until the embargo ends. Um, 10, 15 Eastern time PM uh, on Tuesday for the forerunner reveal. And I'll be giving you the impressions of the Camry hybrid, the Land Cruiser hybrid, the Tacoma hybrid, uh, the crown signia, etc. So stay tuned for all that. And I got to cut myself off. Thanks for watching and peace.